Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, my talk is uh, the Roto OKD4 operators FCOS and Kubernetes. Um, so let's have a quick look at the agenda. Uh, what is OKD4? This will be the first point. Then I'll quickly talk about FCOS, Fedora Core OS. Um, we'll have a very short preview demo. And uh, then I'll pitch to you that you should try out OKD4. Um, then we'll have a quick look at the road ahead, the roadmap, and uh, also what, what's next in OKD. Um, and then I'll pitch the OKD working group, which I'm chairing together with Diane um, and Danny Komnia, who is our community chair from outside of Red Hat, who isn't here, I think. Um, yeah. All right, let's get started. What is OKD4? Uh, OKD4 is the origin community distri distribution of Kubernetes that powers OpenShift. Um, it's not an acronym, uh, that's very important, it just means that. Uh, it's the OpenShift code base uh, plus Fedora CoreOS. So we build um, essentially off of the master branches, so we run, o what OKD4 is right now is what OpenShift 4.4 uh, will be in some, at some stage essentially. We, we build off of the masters. Um, yeah. And plus Fedora CoreOS, and there's a little star there. It could be any operating system that is built with the RPM OS tree and ignition technologies. Um, I'll dive into that in a bit, a little bit more as well. Uh, so if you want to check out OKD4, uh, go to okd.io and you'll land on this page. Um, yeah. All right, so uh, this is a slide. I think we had a similar one in an earlier talk. Already, so this is uh, OCP, the product. And as you can see, if I go to the next slide, there's a little difference there. Um, we switch out the operating system, which in the product, OCP, is, uh, is Red Hat CoreOS or RHEL CoreOS. Uh, and here it is Fedora CoreOS. So that's the main difference. We use the same OpenShift code base, but the operating system is different. What's very cool in, in, Kubernetes, in, in OpenShift um, is that we update the operating system through the cluster and we just bind the lifecycle together so the operating system becomes an implementation detail. So here we switch out uh, the RHEL CoreOS with Fedora CoreOS. So what's Fedora CoreOS then? Um, the mission statement of Fedora CoreOS, I'll just quickly read it out, is in, it's an automatically updating, minimal, monolithic, container-focused operating system designed for clusters, but also operable, operable standalone, optimized for Kubernetes, but also great without it. So while well, RHEL CoreOS is just focused for that one use case, on that one use case as a cluster, Fedora CoreOS is also operable, standalone, and can run uh, just container workloads uh, on a single node without the cluster. Um, so it's a new, Fedora Core OS is a new Fedora edition. Uh, it's an automatically updating Linux OS. It's purpose built for running containerized workloads at scale. It's composed out of Fedora RPM packages. Um, it is based on RPM OS tree and ignition. And more on that again in a second. Um, and it's combining the Core OS philosophy and Project Atomic technology. All of our learnings we've taken from Project Atomic and then uh, the philosophy of CoreOS container Linux uh, that came in with the CoreOS acquisition um, alongside the Ignition technology, for example. So maybe I'll, I'll just uh, dive into what, what Ignition RPM OS tree is a little bit more. It's a, you know, I'm, I'm technical, so if you get bored with this, I'll, I'll skip this quickly. I'll keep it uh, short. Um, so Ignition is our declarative first boot uh, configuration system. So we have a declarative uh, config, the ignition config specification. And on, first, on the very first boot after provisioning, it'll set up the system as needed. Like, in what cloud am I running? What do I need to configure here? Uh, so ignition will do that for you on the very first boot. And then we take the same configuration and 
have it managed with an operator for day two operations. Um, so it's yeah, it's a very intricate and very very cool system, and that essentially allows us to have our clusters run on autopilot with all the operators. Um, RPM OS tree, on the other hand, is the base for our immutability. Uh, the sort of it, we compose images out of RPM packages and have an immutable, semi-immutable system um, where only only you can only write on parts of of uh, of the file system, while the rest is totally mutable. And then an update will happen by downloading a new OS tree commit, laying that onto disk and booting into that commit. Um, and on traditional Fedora, or well, on Fedora Core OS, you can actually roll back. Uh, we don't support that in the cluster use case. A rollback would, would be an update to the older version, sort of updating to the older commit again. Um, so there's only yeah, there's no going back in that graph. Uh, so yeah, Red Hat, what's the difference with Red Hat Core OS? Um, again, Red Hat Core OS is a component and implementation detail um, of OpenShift. It updates alongside OpenShift. There's only one life cycle. You don't really notice anything about the update that's happening to the operating system. Um, and as opposed to Fedora Core OS, a Red Hat Core OS is based on the RHEL package set. So let's quickly switch to the preview demo. So we're in preview state right now. Um, it's like an alpha, maybe almost beta. And I have a cluster spun up here. Um, so as you can see, we have different branding. Uh, it's OKD instead of instead of the OpenShift one. Um, so the main difference is let me quickly dive into the node details just to show you we're we're running on the OS image Fedora Core OS, which just got uh, it's a, it's a little bit small maybe. Um, So Fedora Core OS was just uh, released stable, I think, last week. Uh, so we're running on that. And then as we're building off of the master branches, we already use Kubelet 117.1 and, yeah, and uh, Cryo 117 as well. Um, one important difference is that you'll notice as a customer uh, trying this out, uh, on the operator hub, you'll have access to the community operators. You don't have, have access to the, uh, to the Red Hat um, operators, but most of, all of them have their upstream operators, which you, can, which you can install through the operator hub. So on the operator hub, you will find all the, all the community operators. All right, let's switch back. And now my pitch, uh, try it out. Uh, please give us feedback. In the difference between OKD or Origin 3.11 and um, OKD 4 is that we're based on Fedora now. It used to be based on CentOS. But for us as Red Hat, it's very important to get that early feedback running the cluster on the newest kernel, on all the newest tech um, that is out there. And we really want that early testing and early feedback to improve the product later on to have, have feedback and changes naturally trickle down from OKD, from the master branches into, into the product. And that wasn't really possible with, with OKD 3.x. Now uh, it is possible. So go to okd.io, uh, go to the download section and download it. Um, we have a release page where you can find all the CI builds of OKD and try any of them out, uh, preferably a green one. Otherwise, uh, you might not be able to, uh, to test anything. Um, and then give feedback. We have two repositories, actually. One for the technical feedback, which is this one, uh, GitHub, 
github.com slash openshift slash OKD. So if you find anything, any bug on, OpenShift, uh, on OKD, we will uh, file it there, we will triage it and uh, send it to the responsible team internally uh, to have it fixed as soon as possible. Uh, the, yeah, let's get to the road ahead. Mm, so we created a, an OKD4 roadmap together with the community, with the OKD working group that formed about half a year ago. And we had some general guidelines in there. Um, that is, we'll use Ignition v3. Right now, OCP still runs with Ignition spec v2. We'll use Ignition spec v3 uh, because just to get, we'll get there with the, with the product soon, but we want to get that early testing again. And then we'll have sort of one, one OS we always want to support, which is Fedora core OS. We're open actually to supporting more or helping other communities get their own OS into OKD and use it as a base for OKD. Um, again, as Red Hat, it makes most sense for us to just use or focus on Fedora here. But there is a path uh, to create a sub-working group, for example, if you're uh, with the SUSE, OpenSUSE community and you want to use that operating system as a base for OKD, um, there's a path for you to actually get that sort of going and uh, talk to, to the working group and there's a process for that. Um, so there's a few general guidelines and then we had the phase zero, which was get the first alpha out. And we've done that. So we're in phase one right now, which is sort of more of a stabilizing phase. It's still pretty much internal. You can't really participate, contribute a lot. But once we go GA, it will be in phase two. And then we'll also revisit this roadmap. And in phase two, uh, we want to really focus on community collaboration and technology incubation. Meaning that if you have any ideas for features, or you find bugs early on in, the, in OKD, um, we want to be the interface to Red Hat externals to make, make collaboration actually possible. That was very hard with uh, OKD 3.x, and there was lots of room for improvement there. So with, with your new OKD working group, we really want to make that possible. Um, and this, this is leading over to, to this part, the OKD working group. Uh, we have two repositories, uh, the community repository, which is sort of for planning the meetings and, um, and everything organizational. And then we have the OKD repository, which is the technical one. So this is where you would file bugs and we would again triage them and send them off to the right people to fix. Um, you can find us on Slack. Uh, there is the OpenShift dev channel on the Kubernetes Slack. And there's also, we're also in the OpenShift users channel. So if you have a user-oriented question, go to the users question, uh, channel. If it's really a dev question, uh, we're in the dev channel. And then also the OpenShift common Slack, you might be familiar with that. Uh, we're essentially in any channel there. I think there's, we're on the general channel, definitely, and there's an OKD4 channel on the OpenShift Commons Slack as well. We also have a mailing list uh, in the form of a Google group. Uh, it's another annoying URL. <laughs> you can copy down now or just get the slides later. Uh, join, join that group and you'll be informed of everything that's happening, of our meeting uh, agendas and meeting times, and you'll get the links to the recordings of those working group meetings as well. So come by and say hello. We're always open to new interested members um, that want to contribute. And is there anything more? Yeah, so we have uh, two projects, Kanban projects on GitHub as well. One in the community uh, repository, which is again for planning out the meetings, setting the agenda. Um, Diane manages that. Um, Usually, so this is where we plan out the meetings, and you'll you can see the agendas uh, up front, and you can even, uh, well, add ideas for the agenda. And then the other one, uh, which is the the OKD4 project, it's if you go to the OpenShift organization, it's the only organization-wide.
project there. And that again is for following the, the current status of, of development of the engineering work we do on OKD4. And with that, I'm already through. I think I haven't... That is